two people at the back who have their hands up forever. Um, yeah, uh, three little quick questions. Who certifies in Canada and the U.S.? And are they certifying the same way? Okay. Second question is, how much does it cost to get certified and then to get recertified? Okay. What's the process? And how much time does it take to get certified? Assuming you're like full and you're trying to do the right thing, and then you find the corp and you, you follow the steps to get into that, as opposed to IBM. Yeah, yeah. All right, so the first piece, every B Corp in the world is, is certified through the nonprofit organization B Lab, which started this entire movement, um, and the global headquarters is Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. But we have global partners, so I operate as the global partner in Canada. We have global partners in Australia, the UK, Netherlands, Portugal, Brazil, Argentina, and Ecuador, I believe. Um, and, and we're sort of the community animators and, and, and public engagement folks, but the standard itself um, goes through the global headquarters of B-Lab. Um, so that's point number one. Point two on cost. Um, we believe that, that uh, one, it, does, it costs money to even do upkeep for our operation as a nonprofit, but we also think it's really valuable to have skin in the game, and that comes in two forms. Um, to show that you're really serious about this, um, the one form is is uh, the change to your line of articles of, of incorporation, so that you're actually going to take that leap and legally commit to the consideration of other stakeholders. It's not prescriptive, it doesn't tell you how to do your business, but it, 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 it makes it clear that you're going to think about that stuff a, as you scale. Um, and then the other piece is a certification fee, and we've done that on a sliding scale based on revenue to try and, and, and create it. Every step of the way the idea is that it's um, it's enough to mean something, not so much that it can't be overcome. And, and, and so if you're doing a million dollars in revenue or less, it's $500. And then that scales up to, um, you know, at, at $5 million, $10 million, $20 million, $50 million. At $100 million, it's 25 grand. And we only have $1 billion company so far, but at a billion, it's 50 grand. The idea is not to punish you for being wildly successful. It's... And that's why, you know, for a tenfold increase, it, it, it's only twofold at, at the top end. It's just recognizing that if you're doing a billion dollars, we're probably going to have to track down a ton more information. It's going to be three staff people instead of one staff person and, and, and things like that. Um, so that's on the fee side. And then the third piece was time. time. And time varies wildly. The, the, the sort of touch point I would point to is six weeks. Not of nonstop work, but just sort of as you get to it, um, it it's six weeks. It really is. The, the first piece is the assessment, all online, all digital, no strings attached. Um, you can log on tonight to beimpactassessment.net um, and just check it out for educational purposes or just to test it out. Um, and ideally, if you are ridiculously well organized and have a pretty straightforward operation, um, you could sit down and in two to three hours be done with that. Um, if you're not well organized, even if you're a small operation, it could take much longer. Or if you're in manufacturing, all of a sudden there's just a whole lot more, move, many more moving pieces. Um, it's gonna, it's gonna stretch out and be longer. Um, you know, I think the Bose process was probably more like six months instead of six weeks. But again, it, it's the, the biggest thing is just finding out where it fits into your your larger strategic agenda, and that's why, you know, I'm never. I've never done a hard sell on B Corp. I, I meet with a ton of business and say, let's figure out how to do this when it's right for you. When it's right for, like if you're scaling employees, or, or when it's right when you're looking for investors, or when it, when it fits with a nice marketing play that you're doing otherwise, um, then let's do it. Um, it may not be tomorrow, it may be in six months, and let's check in then. Um, but, it, it, but really, the, the, sort of the go-to number is six weeks, uh, from start to finish. If you were to log on tonight, and then follow up, let's say you log on tonight and in the next two weeks you finish the assessment and you're done and you scored 95 points. Then we'd set up a phone call with the global standards team. You're going to get on the phone for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. They're going to walk through. Part of that is just sort of a smell test. Does your story add up? This is sort of the, you know, the first screen. Um, are you actually, do you have solid answers to, to, to the data points you, you've put forward? Um, and then there's a documentation phase after that. We, we require documentation on about 5% of the questions. It's, a, it's not quite random, but it's not so much that I can tell you what the 5% questions are. It's going to be based on your business, what you're doing really well. If you say, we have the greatest dental plan in all of Canada, fantastic. We just need to see the policy and the policy number and all that jazz. 
Um, if you're bullfrog energy power, fantastic. We just need that that agreement or, or, or uh, the statements on that, it, it, things like that. Um, if you are fair trade certified or organic or wage mark certified, great. We just need the paper trail on that. Um, and then legally, what you know, whenever you can jump in with your lawyer and change your articles, pay your fee, you're done. It's usually six weeks is the short answer. So a quick uh, yep. additional question. If you're a corporate uh, co-op, your articles are set up as a co-op. Yep. Along with seven model uh, principles. Yep. It requires a slight tweak to the language, but it's completely possible. And it just basically the only issue with co-ops is it takes more votes to say yay, rather than just getting you know two people on board at Bose or whatever like whatever their ownership structure is. I need seventy-five people on board at X grocery store, right? Yes, you've been up forever. So I'd like you to take the question first, but to, to clarify for my own mind, beyond B Corp certification, what would it take for them to reincorporate as a benefit corporation? I mean, what, how would you structure, I mean, from a legislation point of view, under what conditions would it make sense to incorporate under a new structure? But if you could update us on what the situation of that type of legislation is in Canada. Okay, yeah, so I, I think first, um, if you could speak and then I, I can unpack a little bit and, and we may have someone in the room. Legally, it's not that hard to amend your articles of incorporation to meet, you know, the terms that would satisfy as a B Corp. I mean, it's essentially you know, having your lawyer do a submission of an amendment of articles. But what you do need is you need um, shareholder approval. Um, and, you know, depending on your original articles of incorporation, you know, that might require, uh, might be a special resolution and a special meeting, so you've got to have the time available for that. And, and then you have to achieve, say, 90%. Um, I think in our, uh, in our, it's either 80% or 90%, you know, based on us. We actually have gone ahead and done the amendment of our articles, mostly because we, uh, you know, we exited a bunch of small investors that had been with us from our friends and family round that we had at the start of the business and, um, and it was time to bring on a new partner and kind of consolidate the ownership and we actually did an amendment of the articles frankly to protect the social mission you know at Bridgehead given that we're probably looking at additional financing transactions as we continue to grow. Um, uh, so that you know but it's it's, it's really easy le legally but there's a pretty high test in terms of your shareholder um, percentage agreement, depending on what your structure is, that needs to be in place. Does that answer your question on that front? Yeah, I guess I'm just wondering then, is legislation for a corporation or dual purpose business really necessary or appealing to existing companies? Special for us, no special purpose legislation. In fact, when we started the company, I had to sort of say, hmm, do we want to be a worker co-op? Do we want to be a multi-stakeholder co-op? Um, and we actually chose the for-profit vehicle because we felt that we could embed uh, principles within that structure and not have to provide a T-bill rate of return on any investments in the beginning or have to deal with a bunch of decision makers necessarily that we felt we could grow faster. I, and I'm sure you're about to speak to this, but my understanding anyway is that whereas in the United States you have the C corporation and the B corporation, that isn't the case in Canada. Um, but my understanding is that that's being worked on, which I'll now pass off to you. <laughs> um, yeah, so first of all, like, it, I would say that, that it doesn't make sense for a ton of businesses too. Like certification may be enough, or um, B Corp certification may not be what's right for you and you can still do amazing things and then there are others that actually are looking for sort of that official legitimacy there's a ton in uh, especially in, in dealing with investors if you're looking to scale 
um, to make it that straightforward and clear cut. Um, you know, traditional money does not like ambiguity. They like it clear. And some people may say that they don't like any of this social stuff. I don't think that's true. I just think they don't like the ambiguity. So I think there are investment markets that very much desire to put their money um, in places if it is if it is clear cut enough that, that it's about benefit, especially you know within a global context of I mean rates of return for just sitting on your money are, are not worth a ton right now, and then it's even like you know the the the, uh, the governor of the Bank of of England is I mean they're talking about negative. Um, interest rates. So at the point where I, I'm going to get, you know, penalized for holding on to my money, you better believe I'm going to going to invest it in places that I can feel good about, um, and all of a sudden be looking for investments that, you know, all of a sudden your investment portfolio is extended because otherwise I'm I'm, I'm going to take a hit for sitting on the money. And so in that way, to to provide a clear landing spot, I think is helpful. And I think that we've seen in the U.S. where, where over three years we've had some 1,800 companies flock to this. We, and, and it's early days and who knows like, how well it's going to continue to play out, but there is a market demand there that I would say, again, that we haven't necessarily seen in, in the structure that we've seen in BC, which was a fantastic first try, but I don't think it quite matches where the market is and ultimately where, where the investment dollars are. And, and, if, and if, if you don't provide clarity, I think it just scares investment to death. And so specifically on, on some of this conversation in Canada, I, we've got someone in the room that, that I, I think can speak to this a little bit, and, and I, I, called, I hope that she would be able to make it for, for two reasons. One, um, selfishly, she is my MP um, in, in my riding of Toronto Centre. Um, but before she was that, she had, had, was an advocate for the B Corporation movement in some of her, her riding and some, and some great pieces that sort of put on display for all of North America to see. Um, some great stories of B Corp and, and understanding of the impact investing market space. And so I don't know if she's willing to speak, now that I've completely put her on the spot, so she's got to say something, right? But I, I do see that Ms. Krista Friedland is in the room, um, MP for Toronto Centre. Um, while we are a completely nonpartisan, non committed to anything movement, um, she's done some great work around um, benefit corporations. And if she has any thoughts specifically to where we're at in Canada, or what we'd like to see, um, I, w I would love it if, if you could offer any of that up. You know, moving forward from the Canadian Bar Association last year did recommend benefit corp legislation, but I don't know where we're at from there, or you know, where the conversation is. If, if you're willing, now that you're up here. <laughs> um, so I'm a politician. Of course, I'm willing to talk. <laughs> it's like a professional deformation. There's no microphone. Um, I, I can shout. Air was an easy one, so I can shout. Um, so, just a short answer. Um, I think it would be helpful for Canada to have the legislation. It's clearly not necessary, and we have some excellent companies that are working in this space without it. But why not make it easier? And I think that Aaron made a good, a really good point about how make it clearer and easier for investors. And I think having that sort of stamp of approval of legislation is really helpful. Um, I think this is tremendously important. Um, I think that, you know, this is the future of the market economy in this room. I really think a lot of people are appreciating that, like, we get, you know, communist, the Soviet Union collapsed that is not an alternative model. But there are so many things wrong with the way a lot of market businesses work. And I think we find it frustrating as customers, as employees, as owners, as investors. So I, I think this is really the beginning of a huge transformative wave um, that will be great for Canadian society, great for Canadian investors. And we're certainly working with the B Corp people um, to figure out um, some legislation that would just really make it easier. But I, I think that this should be sort of at the center of, you know, if anyone believes that um, it's possible to have a market economy which isn't only about making money, it is partly about that, but it's also about social good. And how could you not believe that? Um, then I think that this movement is really essential. And that's why, you know, I wrote about it before I became a politician, and it's something I think we really have to put at the center of 
our legislative efforts and really at the center of how we're driving economic policy in this country. And I'm also a very happy uh, consumer <coughs> of many of the products <laughs> produced by the people on this panel. So it's very nice to see you guys. You're my inspiration as our core activists. Thank you very much. <laughs> So, real quickly, to respect everyone's time, it is 7.30 right now. Um, I'm going to wrap things up with one final comment if anybody wants to jump in. I'll hang out for as long as in, until someone kicks me out, and then we can arrange to talk tomorrow if, if you have time and, and the interest is there. Um, but real quickly, just to combine a, a couple of my last potential questions in, into one thing that if anybody wants to put forward. I, I think that... Um, one of the major pieces, you know, we've talked about transparency, we've talked about accountability, all those pieces, but the other piece of, of B Corp, it, it really only half the work is certification. And it, if we don't have an excellent certification, it's all for naught. And so that's why we've created something that's transparent, it's up there for the world to see. You can see every question that we're asking. You can see what some of the big, you can see what BDC was asked. You can see what Ben and Jerry's was asked. You can see what, like, what we're about. Um, so that's not necessarily a secrecy. But that's only half the work. The other half really is in building community. It's helping to, to rewrite the economy, to all of a sudden connect business players um, across sectors, across geographies, to all of a sudden connect with one, one another's money and also connect with one another's imagination and, and figure out how you can do the next big thing together. Um, and so on that idea of community, and then the last piece I was, I was going to ask if anyone had a sort of taking in this whole conversation, if there's a challenge that, that, that you, because you're on this side of the desk and not on that side of the desk, if there's a challenge that you, you want to issue, if, if there's anything between sort of the, the power of community, which I, I so firmly believe in and, and not in any sort of soft way, like I think selfishly I need that community to, to make better ideas, to make greater change, um, and to be accountable to, to something more than just, you know, benevolent dictatorship in my own head. Um, if there's a, a role for community, and, and if you have any thoughts on, on community that you might package as a challenge for the room. Anyone, if not, I'll make something up. I have, I have a challenge for the room. <laughs> just challenge the paradigm. Like, everyone just assumes that, you know, well, you no know, business can afford this, and, and, you know, it's all about making money, or else we're going to lose jobs. And that's not true. I can give you a thousand examples of that's not, that's not true. And we can turn that around, but we have to challenge those people. You know those people who will just say, like, oh, we can't afford it. Yes, we can. I, I, I have the proof. <laughs> that's my challenge. Okay. Any other um, thoughts? Well, I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess you know, for us, the, the biggest thing is that we strongly believe that that the beer tastes better if you feel good about drinking it, and um, that's it's really important to us. And I think um, my challenge is going to be kind of uh, it's not going to be specific. Maybe I'll come up with a specific one after. But it's that um, you know being mindful about your business and the community and becoming a B Corp um, is good business. If anyone tells you otherwise, I'm sorry, they're wrong. Um, it's good for employee retention. It's good for attracting great talent, as, as we've talked about. Um, it's good for our consumers. Our product is something that it is high quality, and we do not shy away from high quality ingredients, organic ingredients, local ingredients. Uh, it's, it's important. And so the consumers that purchase our beer and enjoy our beer, although maybe they just like beer, that's possible, but they like our beer because it's, it's a quality product. And we wouldn't have that if we didn't have the focus on the community and, and all the rest. Um, so it's, it's good for all of that, and, uh, and it's good, as, as you mentioned, for the community at large. Um, so that would be my challenge. It's just, it, if anyone tells you otherwise, investing in these kinds of things is, is good business. Um, and, and I guess my thing will be, um, it's really important to look, occasionally take stock, you know, the 30,000 square foot view, and say, hmm, what's it all about? Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, you know, what, I think we all look for meaning and purpose. And uh, if we can get that, you know, if you think about how much your, of your life is your working life with colleagues, wouldn't you rather get along with your colleagues than not get along? Wouldn't you be rather working towards a shared purpose and shared vision and have shared values? Yeah. 
Life's a lot more fun. <laughs> anyway, but you know, do you have that? Things have stopped. I would say that the, in terms of community building, a really critical part of it is trust, and that B Corps is a way to go and build that trust, both in terms of being able to see at companies and see who are who who is listed as who's gone through the process of certifying, um, what are they good at, to hear some of the stories to learn from. It's a really great opportunity to go and build trust and to build that that connections because because it's so global. There's no way that I would you know most coffee companies in the world I don't know as well as I know Bridgehead. And you know, so there's a level where I can't compare what you know, Bridgehead is at a par which is above everyone else because I don't know of any other coffee company that is, because I haven't had this close of an association with them, but I have this trust with Bridgehead. But you know, there's so many products where you can't have that. You can't have that level of, you know, if you're buying um, cleaning products or if you're buying whatever, like how do you know that that, that how if you're buying a car, what is an ethical you know, choice in terms of, of, of your purchasing, how are you using your purchasing money? Um, the challenge, though, I would make is that if you have a business or if you're thinking about it, um, take a look at the B Corp certification. There's an analysis that you can complete. There's no cost going online and doing it. And take a look at it. Even if you're not expecting to go off and do it, there's stuff you will learn by, by looking at the 200 points and exploring it. So it's, it's worthwhile to just to look at that. Well, thank you all. Um, I, I just want to thank um, each of you with Open Concept Consulting, Bridgehead, Bozal Natural Brewing Company and Fairtrade Canada. I also want to say thank you to the West End Well for offering up this space and the food. Um, and I thank you all for participating in this conversation. For me, this really is just the beginning of something. Um, I think that that um, the movement is growing. I think our organization is growing. I'm looking uh, for this to be a vibrant conversation over the next few years. So let's let's not let this be the end. Let this let's let this be the beginning. Um, and then also, I've got a couple of uh, sort of door prizes that that Paul from from African Bronze Honey Project. Another local B Corp is going to stand up with his 60 second commercial while I also thank through the offering of some amazing B Corp certified, organic certified, fair trade certified fair trade. honey <laughs> right here in Ottawa um, to a couple of uh, people asking questions that I think furthered the conversation. Thank you very much for pushing the conversation. And I didn't know it was going to go. And then. Of, of throat lozenges, which I could be wrong, but if there are three politicians in the room that speak professionally, I've got, I've got uh, African Bronze Honey Project's throat lozenges, so boom, we're gonna, we're, we'll make this happen. But also, Paul, you want to speak up? Hi, everybody. I'm Paul. The people ask, what does it mean to be a B Corporation? I'm going to give you an astonishing thing that, you, that will change your life or not. This week, we, our project imports honey on behalf of 6,000 independent beekeepers. We sell it to schools and not-for-profits. They sell it as a fundraiser. We agree with it and invest a portion of profits back into more beekeeping in Africa. We say we sell honey, but our product is empowerment. We go into schools, we talk about Africa, we talk about the challenges, we talk about independence, how people from one of the remotest places on the planet can produce one of the most amazing products in the world, this organic, fair trade honey. It's an astonishing product. 